Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. We have a sequence of independent and identically distributed random variables from y1 to yn. These random variables are exponential with the rate parameter lambda. Y with the subscript k between brackets is the kth largest among the n iid random variables. Y1 is the maximum. Yn is the minimum. Our interest is the expectation of this ratio. Note that if each random variable y is multiplied by the same positive number, this ratio won't change. We can just scale the random variables so that their mean is equal to 1. That is, without loss of generality, we can assume that lambda is equal to 1. The BDF of yk is equal to exponential minus small yk. yk is non-negative. The joint distribution of the unordered set of random variables is just the product of the marginal distributions because the random variables are independent. The indicator I'm writing here and there is equal to 1 if the proposition inside is true. Otherwise, the indicator function is equal to 0. We can split the quantity of interest into two ratios. The expectation of this part is just 1 over n. The expectation of the sum over the sum is equal to 1. By linearity of expectation, on the left-hand side, we have expectation of y1 over the sum, all the way to the expectation of yn over the sum. These expectations are equal, as the random variables are iid. Applying the expectation to this part, we get 1 over n. The challenge is to deal with this part, where we have the kth largest random variable. Note that the ordered random variables are neither independent nor identically distributed. Is there a set of random variables easier to handle than the ordered random variables? The idea here that we attempt, and it eventually works, is to use the differences between the ordered random variables. Specifically, let xn be equal to y n between brackets. That's the minimum of the random variables from y1 to yn. This, of course, means that y n between brackets is xn. xn minus 1 is y n minus 1 minus y n. By definition, the new random variable xn minus 1 is non-negative. Note that if we add we get x1 plus xn minus 1 on one side. On the other side, we get y between brackets n minus 1. xn minus 2 is equal to y n minus 2 between brackets minus y n minus 1 between brackets. That's non-negative. Also, the random variable xn is non-negative because our random variables here are exponential. If we add, we get xn plus xn minus 1 plus xn minus 2. When we add the right-hand sides here, we get yn minus yn plus yn minus 1 minus yn minus 1 plus y between brackets n minus 2. x3 is equal to y3 between brackets. That's the third largest y random variable. We subtract y4 between brackets. x3 is a non-negative random variable. We see the pattern. y3 between brackets is xn plus xn minus 1 plus xn minus 2 all the way to x4 plus x3. x2 is y. 2 between brackets minus y3 between brackets. y2 is y3 plus x2. Finally, x1 is equal to y1 between brackets, the maximum of the random variables from y1 to yn minus y2 between brackets, the second largest y random variable. The maximum of the y random variables is equal to the sum of all x random variables. In the quantity of interest, we have the sum of the y random variables we get the exact same value if we sum the ordered random variables. What is this sum in terms of the x random variables? If we sum the right-hand sides, x1 appears once, x2 appears twice, x3 appears three times, xn appears n times. This sum is equal to summation v from 1 to n, v x of v. What is the Jacobian matrix? When we differentiate the maximum, y1 between brackets, with respect to x1, we get 1. With respect to x2, we get 1. With respect to x3, we get 1. And so forth. The first row in the matrix has 1s. The second largest, y2 between brackets, is this sum here. The partial derivative with respect to x1 is equal to 0. With respect to x2 is 1. With respect to x3 is 1. With respect to xn is 1. The partial derivative of y3 between brackets with respect to x1 is 0. With respect to x2 is 0. With respect to xk, k from 3 to n is 1. From here, we see that the row before last is 0, 0, 0, 0, and then it ends in two ones. The last row is all 0 except in the last position where we have 1. The Jacobian matrix is upper triangular. The determinant of this matrix is the product of the main diagonal elements, which is 1. The absolute determinant is 1. In other words, the joint distribution of the x random variables is just the joint distribution of the ordered y random variables. 
we replace y1 by the sum of the x's, y2 by the sum excluding x1, y3 by the sum excluding x1 and x2. We keep doing this. Finally, yn is equal to xn. This joint distribution is a classical result in order statistics. Given the IID random variables from y1 to yn, one of them is the maximum. We have any choices. We are left with n minus one random variables. One of them is the second largest. We are left with n minus two random variables. One of them is the third largest, and so on. These random variables take the values from small y1 to small yn. Let's write an indicator to emphasize that these are ordered random variables. They are also non-negative. If we combine the product of exponentials, we get exponential of the sum. In terms of the x variables, this is x1 plus 2x2 plus 3x3 all the way to n xn. This can be written as e to the minus x1 times e to the power minus 2x2 times e to the power minus 3x3 and so forth. Note that the x random variables are differences between the ordered y random variables. The x's are not ordered. For instance, this difference here can be greater than that one or vice versa. What we are sure of is that the x random variables are non-negative. The joint distribution of the x random variables is product k from one to n, k e to the minus k x sub k, indicator x k greater than or equal to zero. Note that when the product is applied to k, we get n factorial. The joint distribution can be written as a product of the marginals. The x random variables are independent. Random variable xk is exponential with rate parameter k. The expected value of xk is 1 over k. k is in the set of positive integers from 1 to n. Let's compute this expectation. The required expectation is the expectation of y k between brackets over the sum. But the kth largest y is equal to xn plus xn minus 1 all the way to xk. In other words, if we obtain those expectations for every k between 1 and n, we are able to compute this expectation for every k between 1 and n. The sum downstairs can be written as summation v from 1 to n, v x of v. Everything now inside the expectation is expressed in terms of the x random variables, and these are independent. Integral alpha from 0 to infinity, e to the minus beta alpha, is equal to 1 over beta. We can write down this expectation as the expectation of xk. Integral alpha from 0 to infinity, e to the minus alpha. We multiply by this denominator. xk times the exponential is non-negative. So by Donnelly, we can swap expectation and integration. We can write this part as xk, e to the minus alpha, k xk. Then we have a product, g from 1 to n, g not equal to k, e to the minus alpha, g xg. The x random variables are independent, so we can write the expectation of the product as product of expectations. The expectations look like the moment generating function. If we have exponential random variable z with rate parameter lambda, what is the expectation of e to the tz? where t is in the set of real numbers. This is the moment generating function of z. It is equal to integral small z from 0 to infinity, the exponential PDF, which is lambda, e to the minus lambda z, times this function, e to the tz. This is lambda, integral z from 0 to infinity, e to the minus z between brackets lambda minus t. This integral is finite when lambda minus t is strictly positive. We get lambda over lambda minus t. This result is valid for negative t and for non-negative t all the way to lambda. Note that the moment generating function is finite in a neighborhood of t equals zero. The moment generating function is differentiable over this interval. The first derivative is equal to the expectation of random variable z multiplied by e to the power tz. The first derivative in our case is lambda divided by the square of lambda minus t. Let's apply these results to our problem. Random variable xj is exponential with parameter g. This expectation is the moment generating function g over g minus t t here is given by minus alpha times g. This ratio is 1 over 1 plus alpha independent of g. This product here with n minus 1 terms is equal to 1 over 1 plus alpha to the power n minus 1. We also have this expectation. The expectation is equal to the rate of random variable xk, which is k, divided by the rate minus t squared, 
t is minus alpha k. This expectation is equal to k over k squared times 1 plus alpha squared. Expectation of xk over some v from 1 to n vxv is equal to integral alpha from 0 to infinity 1 over k times 1 over 1 plus alpha to the power n plus 1. The antiderivative is minus 1 over kn times 1 over 1 plus alpha to the power n. When we use the limits of integration, we get 1 over k times n. The expectation of the case largest y, y k between brackets over the sum of the y's, is equal to the expectation of upstairs we have xk plus xk plus 1 all the way to xn. Downstairs we have this summation. We apply linearity of expectation and get the result 1 over n times between brackets 1 over k plus 1 over k plus 1 all the way to 1 over n. The expectation of y k between brackets minus y k over the sum is equal to 1 over n between brackets summation g from k to n 1 over g minus 1.